how realistic is sim racing? I've, I've always wondered this. How realistic is sim racing? Like, uh, compared to Formula One, a Formula One car, like how, like what's the level? Is it like an 80% feel or 90% or 70%? I always wondered. Um, because they, they, I know the F1 drivers usually train with the, with the sim race thing. <laughs> I don't know what to say with the, with, with the sim race, sir. With the sim car. It does that make any, anyways. Um, yeah. Uh, I know Formula One drivers usually train with that. Um, so it should be interesting to see how realistic it actually is. Because I don't actually know. But I'm curious. So let's go. Video by Driver61. Link in the description for check out the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And let's run it up, man. As almost any time. Starting now. The quality of sim racing software and hardware is improving at a rapid rate. Mm -hmm. And aside from not being able to feel all of the motion of a real life car, sim racing is one of the closest options out there to real life. So how close is sim racing to the real world? What are the differences? And if you're fast in a sim, will you be fast in a real world car? Yeah. I'm Scott Mantle, and if you're new to the channel, that's I'm the question. A racer and coach. Over the last three or four years, I've been getting deeper into sim racing, which I absolutely love. I see it as a supplement to real world driving, and I believe the crossover between the two is going to get much deeper going forward. I made a video a few months ago where I compared driving a real world Benetton F1 car, a car in which I set the outright lap record at Brands Hatch to the sim version. In general, the lap times were pretty close. But the feeling in the car just wasn't. Now the car was a mod in a Seto Corsa and I felt like it lacked the development time to make it truly realistic. However, there are better developed sim cars that I've driven both in the real world and the sim, so it's these cars that I'll focus on when referencing how similar the two worlds are. Mm. First up, let's take a look at immersion. What does it feel like? Can my instinctive brain tell the difference between sitting in the sim and the real racetrack? Well, visually we have a few options. We've got single screen, triple screen, and VR. So I'll take a quick look at all three. Using a single screen setup, I'm very aware I'm driving in a sim. It's just not possible to look around the corners as I would in the real world, and the screen simply isn't wide enough. It's mm. also a two-dimensional image, so the depth perception is difficult. With the triple screen, the experience is certainly improved, and the immersion is far better, but the image is still two-dimensional. However, things really change once you put on a VR headset. While the resolution is still a bit of an issue, and your eyes take a while to adjust to the slightly pixelated world, the perception of depth and the ability to move your head in a natural way, looking around the corners, is completely immersive. I found that with VR I have moments when I forget I'm in the sim. I'm fully focused on driving and understanding how to be faster. And the tale for me is that I approach my driving in exactly the same way that I would in the real world. The VR headset allows me to see in 3D. When I first used VR in a sim, I instantly found consistency to my lap time. The 3D image means that it's much easier to just speed and position when entering the corner, mm. leading to far fewer mistakes and a better ability to drive on the limit. In terms of immersion, VR was the biggest step forward I found in my hardware. One of the things we teach in our real world and sim courses is how to find the limit quickly and then adapt your driving style to extract the most speed from the car. And when I'm learning a car in a simulator, I find my process for this and the rate at which I learn is exactly the same as the real world. This is how I gauge how immersive a sim is. And I have to say, with the right hardware and software, this is a big yes. The first thing to say about sim racing hardware is that we're incredibly lucky the design and layout can be exactly the same as the real world. By this I mean the steering wheel, the pedals, the visual cues are all in the right position. I may be wrong, but I can't think of any other eSport where the input devices are the same as the real world, aside from maybe flight simulators, if that's an eSport. This is an important point when thinking about how realistic racing sims are. So in a bit more detail, what about the feeling in the steering wheel and pedals? Mm -hmm. This is a difficult one, as there's so much variation in the quality of these parts. Granted, you can be fast on cheap wheels and pedals, but it's the feeling and realism that I'm interested in exploring here. Yep. I've recently upgraded to a direct drive wheel and some Huizenfeldt pedals. When you look at the quality of the pedals, it's pretty much the same as you'd find in the real racing car. In fact, the throttle and clutch pedals feel almost exactly the same. With regard to the brake pedal, I'm still tweaking the setup, as again you can change the throw, 
firmness and sensitivity. The brake pedal is so important because in the real world as well as sim racing you can make up or lose a lot of time on the brakes so a well set up pedal is really important. It seems that the brake pedals still aren't perfect but the way the brake pedal works and feels is very realistic. Next up the steering wheel. When you're driving a car on the limit in the real world, you're getting constant feedback about the car's behaviour through the steering wheel. You can feel understeer, oversteer, changes in the surface and curves, and I have to say that my sim wheel does an excellent job with this. It's all about communication. We need the wheel to explain what's happening with the car. And the steering wheel is even more important in the sim, as we don't have any g-force going through our backsides helping us understand the car's behaviour and attitude. I'd go as far to say that the details in how the wheel reacts are very close to the real world. It's all well and good having all the hardware, but it means nothing if the sim racing cars don't replicate the real world properly. And again, I'm not just talking about lap time here. Lap time is too much of a simplistic comparison to make. What's more important is the feel of the car and if it reacts like a real world car would. The caveat here is that there are so many different platforms to use between iRacing, R-Factor, Project Cars and Assetto Corsa to name a few. And even within these games there are different levels of development between the individual cars and more importantly tyre models. The tyres are important as they're the only connection between the car and the circuit. They're also incredibly difficult to model due to the massive number of variables, including surface, rubber compound, pressure, tyre temperature and circuit evolution, to name a few. This means that if a software's tyre model isn't as sophisticated as we'd like it to be, the cars will always feel a little bit off. However, when I drive a car and tyre that's been well developed, the similarities to the real world are incredible. A direct back-to-back -back comparison, however, is always going to be difficult due to the multitude of variables previously mentioned. Racing circuits and cars are living, breathing things, and while we may get close to simulating every data point in the future, we're certainly not there yet. So again, I'm going to focus on the feeling of the car, how we use all our senses to understand how the car is reacting and whether that's close to real Yo, life. In my real world training programs, I use a Mazda MX-5. They're the perfect training car. And I actually spent 26,000 miles coaching in that car last year. So it's safe to say I know it well. The MX-5 is one of my favorite cars in iRacing because it is so realistic. Granted, the tyres are a little slow to come up to temperature, but once they do, the car behaves exactly how I expect it to, and that's what's important here. When you're trying to be fast in a race car, it's essential that you adapt your driving style to suit the car, and every car requires a slightly different style to drive it to its full potential. And I take this driving style as a clear gauge of how realistic the sim is. If I need to have a similar steering and pedal input in the sim compared to real life, then the sim is realistic and doing a great job. So next, onto the circuits. As with the cars, the realism of the circuits is dependent on the level of software development. For this yeah. section, we'll just be talking about the laser scan circuits. Thanks to the use of 3D scanners, these circuits are accurate down to the millimetre. Aside from the accurate visuals, what sets the laser scan circuits apart is that the elevation, bumps and curves of the circuit feel the same as in the real world. It's really interesting how the rhythm of the bumps and curves make you feel in groove on track. In comparison, Dude, when I'm wild. driving at a circuit <laughs> that hasn't been scanned, this is wild. it just feels a little bit off. This is such a big thing when driving, as we're using these areas and details of the circuit as subconscious references. And when they don't happen, or happen at the wrong time, it just doesn't sit well. Additionally, the overall grip level of the circuit and the way it evolves is very important to how we perceive realism. In the real world, racing circuits can have fast days and slow days. And at some circuits, lap times can even change by more than a second on the same day. Again, it's all of those variables previously mentioned coming into play. With circuit evolution, plus the build-up of tyre rubber on the racing line, marbles off it, and potentially oil and fuel 
from other cars. As with the tyre model, circuit evolution has so many variables that it's incredibly difficult to simulate. However, I must say some of the sims I've driven do a good job of estimating grip levels and circuit evolution so that I don't notice too many differences when I'm racing. So is sim racing realistic enough that if you were quick in the sim, you would be fast in a real racing car. As well as our real world coaches at Driver61, we also have a team of sim coaches. And what I found interesting is comparing the driving styles, learning processes and dedication of the drivers between the two groups. To be fast in the real world, you need to have a good feel for the limit, understanding when and how much the car is going to slide at any particular time. But beyond that, fast drivers always have a deep understanding of technique and an intellect that allows them to repeatedly try new things in the car, get feedback and then adapt on the following corner or lap. It's this repeated process of assessment and adaptation that ultimately makes them fast and refined. The best sim racers certainly have this same mentality. They have the ability to feel and adapt. So I have no doubt that given some testing and training time in the real world, many sim drivers could get the job done on the world circuits too, which would be the ultimate confirmation that racing sims are indeed very realistic. If you enjoyed this video, learn more about how to be fast in the sim by checking out these videos on our sim dedicated channel. If you'd like to shortcut the learning process and fulfill your sim racing potential, check out our new- That is the end of the video. Um, I mean, I thought it was realistic, but <laughs> this is a little wild. Like you can literally feel the grip, like the grip is similar. Like, <laughs> see, I thought it was realistic. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can, you can, you can practice like a turn or two. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, going into the corner corners, you can just practice how to overtake, how to just get it right doing your turn. Just like, it's like some some of those type of little tricks you can you can pick up. I didn't realize it was like detailed type realistic. Um, Cause like what he said there, like once you put on the, the, the VR set, like you could 360, like you could see around everything, the the, the 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 wheels look the same as in real life, the, the the feel is like similar, even the grid is like is 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 is, is millimeters in difference. Like it that's a little crazy. <laughs> that is a little nuts. That is a a lot nuts. And like they have like trainers that train you in sim racing. I thought I thought it was just a game. I, I literally thought it was just a game. I thought it was like a game that F1 drivers pick up or like people like me and you pick up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like just for fun. I didn't realize it was like you get trained and stuff like that. Like, yeah, man. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good to know. <laughs> that was good to know. Like that, hopefully you enjoyed the video as you can tell we learned a lot in this video <laughs> and if you enjoyed the video don't forget like subscribe to the channel let me know what, what the craziest part that you didn't know but now know was in the comments and we'll see you guys in the next video peace